Senator from Iowa. Yeah. Today, I want to uh, address the ill-advised and really unacceptable conduct at the November 30th Judiciary Committee executive meeting. The majority there didn't allow a single Republican amendment to the adoption of the subpoena authorization, and that was breaking with precedent. Contrary to what Democrats alleged when I was chairman, I followed the rules and let everyone speak who wanted to so speak. I even allowed them to offer resolutions during a confirmation process, which I could have ruled out of order. Simply put, this subpoena authorization isn't based on oversight, it's based on overreach. It's a political hit. Over the past six months, the left's web of dark money interest groups has tried to impugn the character and reputation of certain conservative members of the Supreme Court. This democratic investigation into the Supreme Court totally ignores ethical questions and dark money network surrounding liberal justices. This is all part of a whirlwind effort to cast doubt on our country's highest court and call into question legi the legitimacy of its rulings. Conservative justices have been specifically targeted, harassed, and even threatened. The left's influence peddling scheme views these conservative justices as the greatest obstacle to jamming their radical agenda through our courts because Congress won't do the same liberal abiding bidding. The left has outlined new rules for conservative justices. Justices' spouses must give up their independent law practice. Justices shouldn't vacation with close personal friends. Justices shouldn't have wealthy friends. And justices shouldn't make any new friends after donning their robe. How unfair and how unrealistic. No such conflict of interest ever were raised during the court's liberal years. These rules were not invoked against the court's liberal justices. This persistent political battering of the judiciary is coming at a tremendous cost. The conservative justices have endured real threats to their safety and the safety of their loved ones. As I've said before, judicial decision making must be based on law and sound jurisprudence. It shouldn't be subject to the whims of public opinion or clamor. It cannot result in threats and intimidation to Supreme Court justices. This political hit by the Democrat majority of the committee will do lasting damage not only to the court, but to the committee. Again, this effort isn't really oversight. As I like to brag, we do a good job about Instead, it's about political theater. Let me give some examples of how an investigation should be conducted. During my time as chairman of the Judiciary Committee, 
Starting in 2017, the committee investigated in a bipartisan fashion alleged collusions between Trump campaign and the Russians. Bipartisan committee staff, I want to emphasize that, bipartisan committee staff interviewed five individuals who participated in that meeting, including President Trump's son, and collected documents from several others involved. At the Democrats' request, the committee interviewed an additional six individuals. I subpoenaed even Paul Manafort with then-ranking member Feinstein's agreement to appear at a hearing and to provide testimony, with the exception of Democrats refusing to subpoena Fusion GPS and related parties then Chairman Graham's 2020 crossfire uh, hurricane subpoena authorization was based on years of bipartisan work. As I've thought more about my Democrat colleagues' apparent laser focus on government ethics, it's clear that they've totally ignored the biggest, most obvious ethical fact pattern that requires investigation, and that is of the Biden family. Since August 2019, Senator Johnson and I have investigated the Biden family connection to foreign governments and questionable foreign nationals. We issued two reports and gave three floor speeches that made public hundreds of bank records. Our findings showed criminal activity to include potential money laundering with respect to members of the Biden family and their business associates and the use of public office for private gain. Well, specifically with respect to the Hunter Biden related accounts. Some have often, some have also been flagged for potential human trafficking. As Senator Johnson and I noted in our September 23rd, 2020 Biden family report, Treasury records showed thousands of dollars in financial transactions involving Hunter Biden and Ukrainian and Russian women. These Treasury records link those women to Eastern European prostitution or human trafficking rings. At this Judiciary Subcommittee executive meeting that I've been speaking about, Democrats failed to consider my amendment to gather more facts on this abuse against women. Senator Johnson and I made public a bank record that showed Hunter Biden received $1 million from a Chinese company that was an arm of the communist regime for, rep uh, for representing Patrick Ho. Patrick Ho was charged and convicted for bribery and related federal offenses. Now, guess what? Hunter Biden called Patrick Ho, the spy chief for China. Based on the known facts, it appears that Hunter Biden was effectively a foreign agent of the communist regime. The Judiciary Committee maintained jurisdiction uh, and still maintains jurisdiction over the Foreign Agents Registration Act and the Justice Department's enforcement of it. Yet, the Democrat-led committee has ignored the law and the Biden family. In July of this year, I obtained a publicly re and publicly released what's now called the Biden Family 1023, an FBI document. This FBI-generated document based on information provided to the FBI by a highly credible, long-serving FBI confidential 
human source. The FBI document shows a criminal bribery scheme. The criminal scheme included Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, each being paid $5 million for Joe Biden to take a policy position in favor of foreign nationals. That policy position was ultimately taken. Joe Biden even bragged about it, and you can see it fairly regularly, his voice and his face talking about this, what he did to the Ukrainian government to get somebody fired. The 1023 used the phrase, quote, big guy, quote, quote unquote, to end, uh, to uh, describe Joe Biden before the big guy description was publicly known months later. Different people at different times in different parts of the world independently use the same code name to describe Joe Biden. Do my Democratic colleagues believe that it's just a coincidence? The 1023 includes references to audio recordings with Joe Biden, text messages, and records allegedly proving a bribery criminal activity and that it was real. What have my Democrat, Democratic colleagues done to investigate that evidence? What has the Biden Justice Department done? Tony Bob Ulinsky, FBI interview, noted that the Biden family would receive multi-million dollar unsecured loans intended to be forgivable from the energy company in China called CEFC. That would serve as payments for actions Joe Biden took during the vice presidency. This financial strategy to illegally treat income as a loan is consistent with the IRS's whistleblower testimony that indicated Hunter Biden attempted the same with respect to other income. These facts and allegations indicate criminal activity, money laundering, bribery, tax evasion, and significant ethical violations. And by the way, the Hunter Biden tax indictment mentioned financial transactions that my and Senator Johnson's work uh, exposed years ago. Look at the indictments, paragraphs 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and uh, 100. Compare them with the other two reports from 2020 and three floor speeches last year. My Democrat colleagues have shown zero interest in knowing, understanding, joining forces, or advancing this four-year-old investigation. Instead, they've shown willful blindness to protect the president and family. One of my Democratic colleagues said the right thing when we consider then Chairman Graham's subpoena authorization. Senator Whitehouse brought up an amendment to, quote, uh, reinforce his point made at the last meeting about the selective enthusiasm of the Judiciary Committee for getting to the bottom of things and what appeared to be a policy at the Department of Justice of refusing to answer committee members' letters and committee members' questions for the record. End of Senator Whitehouse's quote. The United States Congress has constitutional mandate to conduct oversight of Republican and Democratic administrations 
without any political bias for either. We have a duty to ensure the Justice Department and the FBI consistently enforce law without regard to politics. Judiciary Committee Democrats were eager to engage in the FBI's Trump-Russia investigation before it was totally debunked. However, they were very eager to falsely attack my and Senator Johnson's Biden family investigation as Russian disinformation. Sadly, I haven't seen the same enthusiasm for the other side now that a Democrat political fa family is under the microscope. If it's criminal and ethical questions my Democrat colleagues are interested in, then the judiciary could, should, in a bipartisan fashion, bring the family members for interviews and uh, obtain records from them. No, the Democrat majority wants to investigate Supreme Court justices, and of all nine of the justices, only the conservative ones. So I can only conclude the Democrats' brand of oversight is more about politics than fact-finding. On another subject, Mr. Chairman, I come to the floor today to bring attention to three brave Department of Homeland Security whistleblowers, Mark Jones, Mike Taylor, and Fred Wynn. These three whistleblowers came to my office to report retaliation and government misconduct. People like this, I say they're, they ought to be considered heroes instead of like skunk at a picnic sometimes as whistleblowers are treated by our bureaucracy. Now the retaliation that they told me about has been extensive and long enduring. In 2018, these whistleblowers made legally protected disclosures to the Office of Special Counsel and Customs and Border Protection. They legally disclosed information about delays and the failure to collect DNA from detained illegal immigrants based on DNA Fingerprint Act of 2005 and subsequent regulations. An August 21, 2019 letter from the Office of Special Counsel to the President substantiated these whistleblowers' disclosures stating, quote, the agency's noncompliance with the law has allowed subjects subsequently accused of violent crimes, including homicide and sexual assault, to elude detection even when detained multiple times by Customs and Border Protection or Immigration and Customs Enforcement. This is unacceptable dereliction of the agency's law enforcement mandate, end of quote. I don't know how you can get a stronger statement from a non-political division of our government about information not being properly used to stop wrongdoing. After making their protective disclosures, all three whistleblowers were re retaliated against. And that gets back to my skunk at a picnic of how whistleblowers are treated by the bureaucracy. They aren't treated as the patriots they ought to be treated as. All they want to do is the government to do what the government's supposed to be doing, the law requires, and how the money should be spent. From February 2018 through the pres to the present, the Customs and Border Protection officials subjected these whistleblowers to significant changes of duty, responsibility, and working conditions. That's how you get treated if you're a whistleblower. After harsh retaliation, Fred Wynn left Customs and Border Protection Office 
of intelligence to work for the United States Border Patrol doing management program analysis work. Mr. Jones and Mr. Taylor didn't receive a per performance award any year after their disclosures for the first time in all of their employment at Customs and Border Protection. They had an overall reduction in pay, have been removed from their supervisory positions, negatively impacting promotional opportunities. Once again, like a skunk at a picnic. The Office of Special Counsel also identified an intentional non-promotion for Mr. George. Additionally, Custom and Border Protection removed credentials, law enforcement authority, firearms and law enforcement retirement coverage from Mr. Taylor and Mr. Jones. The re removal of one's firearm and one's credentials is the ultimate act of personal and career retaliation against federal employees. I've been told that Mr. Jones and Mr. Taylor discovered that one senior official who was aware of their ongoing retaliation refused to commandeer their firearms and credentials without a letter from senior officials. Another person retaliated against. Customs and border officials refused to provide the letter. The senior official who refused to participate in this retaliatory scheme then was involuntarily transferred out of his law enforcement position and stripped of premium pay in July of this year. So another person retaliated against. The Office of Special Counsel said its investigation supports a conclusion that government action against these three whistleblowers constituted a prohibited personnel practice. To put it plainly, the government violated federal law and retaliated against these brave whistleblowers. On August the 18th this year, I sent a letter to Secretary Mayorkas and current head of the Customs and Border Protection, Troy Miller. I ask what they've done to correct the retaliatory actions and take dis dis disciplinary actions against the retaliators. Now, as you might expect, both have failed to respond. Not uncommon after telling Congress when these people come up for, uh, for confirmation, we always ask them, will you answer our letters, answer our phone calls? Will you come and testify before Congress? They always say yes. In the end, I tell them, maybe to be honest, you ought to say maybe. But instead of responding to Congress, Mr. Miller's Custom and Border Protection provided a public comment to the New York Post on August the 22nd. It said this, quote, the Office of Special Counsel terminated its investigation into these claims without issuing a prohibited personnel practice report or seeking corrective action, end of quote. Now the Office of Special Counsel told my staff multiple times that they did in fact seek corrective action with Customs and Border Protection. Customs and Border Protection public comment is then a lie or demonstrably false. On September the 11th of this year, I sent a follow-up letter to further address their failures to protect these whistleblowers and demand public uh, uh, retraction. Secretary Mayorkas and Mr. Miller failed to respond. Uh, but again, Customs and Border Protection provided a public comment to the New York Post saying about my letter, quote, this is a mischaracterization of this issue based on incomplete records and we're unable to comment further based upon open litigation 
regarding these cases, something bureaucrats regularly hide behind with a quotation like that. On September the 27th of this year, I wrote another letter to Secretary Mayorkas and Mr. Miller demanding they explain their second inaccurate public comment, Customs and Border Protection, but not the Department of Homeland Security provided a response on October 17th. That letter said, quote, the Office of Special Counsel didn't issue a final report finding a prohibited personnel practice and didn't initiate corrective action litigation before the Merit System Protection Board on the petitioner's behalf, end of quote. Did anyone catch that distinction? The public comment said, quote, corrective action, end of quote. The letter said, corrective action litigation, quote, unquote. Corrective action can take many firms and doesn't always include litigation. For example, negotiating with a parent agency to put a whistleblower in a position they were in before retaliation occurred. Customs and Border Protection attempted sleight of hand. That sleight of hand has failed. Customs and Border Protection letter makes clear its public comments are false and they were the ones to offer mischaracterization to the public. Secretary Mayorkas has failed to take action despite my oversight efforts. Mr. Jones, Mr. Wynn, Mr. Taylor are still struggling from the many acts of retaliation that have taken against, uh, that have been taken against them for speaking up to protect Americans. But this senator won't stop fighting for them and the dozens of other whistleblowers that have come to my office. There must be accountability for what's happened to these patriotic Americans. I yield the floor.